Hey y'all, in this video we're going to look at intercepted arcs and our focus is going to be on paying attention to them uh, to help us make problem solving easier. Because we know so much at this point, we're going to get more and more complex scenarios and drawings and they can get very intimidating. And when that happens, you default to things you're comfortable with, things you've noticed a million times, like parallel lines cut by a transversal, like triangles, polygons, and vertical angles. And when I first see this drawing to this day, my brain still goes to, oh, vertical angles, right there. Now it's a circle with four chords drawn on it, but those four chords form something much more important than just vertical angles and some triangles. It forms two inscribed angles. So I have this angle here, and I have this angle there. Both of them are inscribed, and they intercept the exact same arc. That means, by the inscribed angle conjecture, uh, that they have to be congruent, right? Because this measures the same, and each of those angles has to be half of that arc measure. So easy conjecture to prove, but what's important is this. So when you get a complex drawing, one of the things I want you to look for are arcs that have been intercepted by two different inscribed angles because you know those angles have to be congruent and it can help you solve your problem. Now specifically, the conjecture is going to be C62, inscribed angles intercepting arcs conjecture, and it says inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are congruent. Now this next conjecture is going to be about inscribed angles and semicircles. So if I have an inscribed angle, which is right here, right, it's going to intercept this arc. And I drew in the diameter to show that the arc that it intercepted was a semicircle. And by the inscribed angle conjecture, I can prove that this is a 90 degree angle because a semicircle has a measure of 180 degrees and any angle that is inscribed that cuts a semicircle has to have a measure that's half of that or 90 degrees. And so this gives us conjecture C63, the inscribed angle intercepting semicircle conjecture. And it simply says an inscribed angle that intercepts a semicircle is a right triangle. And oftentimes you see this conjecture drawn with a whole series of right triangles. You can actually go any point on this part of the semicircle and create two chords uh, that are going to um, create little right triangles. Now the reason why I personally like this conjecture is because it helped me remember the inscribed angle conjecture. There are a lot more circle conjectures to come. Some of them are half, some of them are double, some of them are sums, or some of them are differences, and it gets easy to get confused as to which conjecture says what. And so I always remembered that this drawing here, if I had an angle that intercepted a semicircle, that that angle is a right angle. So my brain remembers this picture, and this picture helps me remember that this inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc measure. And a little side note, the center of the circle is a special point for that right triangle that I drew. Do you remember what point it was? So I'll show you the diagram again. What point is this to this right triangle? Now what I can also do is I can use inscribed angles to form a polygon. Now in this case the polygon is going to be called a cyclic polygon. Any polygon that is inscribed in a circle is referred to as a cyclic polygon. And remember inscribed means the vertices of the polygon are all going to be on that same circle. And so when you get a problem that has this kind of diagram where you see a, a polygon, in this case a quadrilateral, your brain focuses on the polygon, because you're more comfortable with polygons. You've worked with them for a very long time, especially the quadrilateral. And if you had to find angle measures, you're going to focus on, oh, is it a rhombus or a parallelogram or whatever, uh, trapezoids. Um, but what's important for a cyclic polygon is to notice 
the arcs that are formed by the vertices of the polygon. So I'm saying this arc has a measure of A, this mark, uh, arc has a measure of B degrees, C degrees, and then D degrees. And what I'm going to focus on is not the polygon, but the angles that are inscribed, okay, that form this polygon. And so if I extend this out to be like a secant instead of a uh, just a chord, right? You'll see that this angle here is an inscribed angle that measures this big old arc that has a measure of A plus D, right? And if I go to the other side, right, and I extend out these chords, right, in this case I'm making them raise, I will notice that this angle here is the inscribed angle for this arc that has a measure of B plus C. So that means I know the measures of those angles in relation to A, B, C, and D. This angle here is got to be half of the measure of the arc. So this angle here has a measure of one half A plus D. And this angle here has to have a measure of one half of B plus C. And I also know that if I added those two angles together, it would be half of the full circle, right? And the full circle's measure, A plus B plus C plus D, is going to be 360 degrees. So this plus that has to equal 180 degrees. So that means if I have a cyclic quadrilateral, the opposite angles chink, chink, have to be supplementary. So the special property of a cyclic quadrilateral is conjecture C64. The opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So it's been a while since we looked at uh, parallel lines. So if I take a circle and I throw some parallel lines in there, remember these are called secants because they are lines that intersect the circle twice, and I say line one is parallel to line two, I get intercepted arcs. So intercepted arcs don't have to be formed by central and inscribed angles. They can also be formed by parallel lines. Now, you probably can guess that these two arcs have equal measure. Because it makes sense that they have equal measure, like it's kind of intuitive because of the way parallel lines work in Euclidean geometry, right? They're equal distance, so it feels like it feels like they have to be chopping off the same arc 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 measures, right? And this is actually really easy to prove um, because when I have parallel lines, by instinct, I want to like draw in the transversal, right? And I know by alternate interior angles that those two angles are congruent. And oh, hey, what are those two angles? Those two angles are inscribed angles. So this angle is an inscribed angle that cuts that arc. This angle cuts that arc. Those two angles are congruent. Therefore, those two arcs are congruent, which leads us to conjecture C65. Parallel lines intercepting arcs Parallel lines intercept congruent arcs on a circle. Now I have a little challenge thought experiment for you. Those lines, line one and line two that were parallel were secants, right? And so my challenge for you is to think, does C65 hold true when one of the lines is a tangent instead of a secant? 